Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 2D map animation for your travel videos. So my brother recently started his own overlanding slash travel video channel called Vega Venturing. And he asked me if I could make a map animation showing him traveling from Portland to Utah. So in order to do that, I needed two things. One, I needed to know how he got there. I went ahead and used Google Maps and I just typed in Portland to Moab. And this gives me the path that he took. And then I needed one more thing. Since this map has a lot of different things on it that would be kind of hard to get those off, I went ahead and downloaded a map from gisgeography.com. Now the link will be down in the description if you want to follow along. Let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how I put it all together. So I already have my map assets downloaded. I went ahead and I took a screenshot of the Google Maps just so I would know the exact path. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is right click, come to new fusion composition. 24 frames per second is fine if that's the frame rate that you're working in. I am going to change it from 5 seconds to 10 seconds just so my animation is a little bit longer. And I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Now, I'm going to take that fusion comp and drop it directly onto my timeline and jump right over to the fusion page. First thing I'm going to do with a completely empty fusion composition is I'm just going to bring in a background node off the toolbar here. I'm going to take the output of that background node and I'm going to plug it right into the media out and load in the media out. What that's going to do is that's going to set the resolution so I have a 1920 by 1080 comp because everything that I'm bringing in is going to have a different resolution size. So if I come up to the media pool and I'm going to grab this screenshot and this map of the United States and I'm going to bring them both in. You'll notice that it brought them both in as media ins. So the first one is this map and if we look at the resolution it's 2500 by 1810. That's a little bit bigger than our normal 1920 by 1080 resolution. But if I look at this other media, this is the snapshot or the screen capture of the actual path from Google Maps. And we'll see that it's only a 1049 by 860. Now this is obviously based off of whatever size rectangle that I made when I did the screen capture. I'm gonna go ahead and close the media pool for now. I'm gonna have to use both of these medias, combine them in order to make the actual path that Vega Venturing actually took to Moab. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this one off to the side and I'm going to go ahead and rename this to map just so I know that that is the map that I'm going to be using. Now I want to combine this map with this background fusion composition. So I'm going to grab the output and drop it on the output of the background. Now you'll notice if I plug in the media out, you'll see that it is too big. It's zoomed in on a portion of the actual map and it's not even the portion that we want. So I could move it around using the merge, but I don't like to use the merge as a transform because I actually feel that the transform node is better suited. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the map and I'm gonna bring in a transform node after it by using the toolbar up here. And now I can grab the transform handle and I can move it around to the position that I want to start my map animation at. I can also use this transform. If I double click on it, it'll open up the inspector and you'll see that I can actually size it up and down. But if I move it over here, you'll notice that it, you can start to see that the white clips and the black background now starts to show through. There's two different ways we can get rid of that. One is I can come into the background node and I can just change this to the same color as that actual map. That works, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna go ahead and Command and Control Z to undo that. I can also come into this transform node and over where it says edges, I can change it from canvas to duplicate. That's essentially gonna extend the actual pixels that are on the very edge, thus giving us basically the same result. Either Either one of those methods you use is fine. Next, we have to take this map and we want to superimpose this map on top of this map. Now, in order to do that, we're going to use the exact same process. I'm going to take the output of this media two and I'm going to drop it on the output of that merge one. I'm going to load this in and you'll see that it is now superimposed. Let's go ahead and take this merge and I'm going to blend it down just a bit so that I can see through it into the map behind it. After the media, I'm going to go ahead and bring in another transform node and this transform node, I'm actually going to move I want these Portlands to match up. All right, that looks pretty good. Those are lined up. You'll notice that these aren't of the same angle. You can see that the coastline is completely off. Now we could start to rotate it, but the easiest thing to do is actually to move the pivot point. I want this to rotate and size from Portland just to make it a little easier on myself. So I'm gonna move this pivot point off to the left and I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna drop it directly where I want it to rotate from, which I want it to rotate from Portland. So now I can hold down the commander control key and I can move this angle Angle, it'll move it in smaller increments and now I can come over here and all I have to do is match up this Moab with this Moab behind it. So I'm going to need to size it down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hold command and control and size it down, move it till it 
almost matches up and now command and control and I can move it to the angle matches up pretty close. That looks pretty good. Those seem to match up pretty well. I have Portland matching up with Moab so we know that the size is pretty close. You can see that the coastline is still a little bit off and that's okay. Every map is going to be slightly different. So now that we have that set up we need to copy this path. So we wanna make sure that our polygon is in 1920 by 1080. So in order to do that, the easiest way is to just grab a background, click on a polygon, because we know that the background is going to be brought in as a 1920 by 1080 mask. I can start up here in Portland and I can just follow this map path that we actually took. And it ends right here at Moab. Now that I've made that path, I don't need the snapshot at all. I can go ahead and select all of it and just hit my delete key and now I just need to connect this background behind the transform, thus connecting the actual loop. So we don't see anything. And the reason we don't see anything is because this polygon actually is set up with a border width of zero. So let's go ahead and just increase this border width just a little bit by holding the command or control key and giving it a little bit of border width. And now we can start to see the line. I can go ahead and give it a little bit more until it's at a level that I'm happy with. Now I don't necessarily want it to be black, although that stands out okay. It's also the same color as the lines of the states. So I'm gonna come into this background and just make it red. Now, if this was the line that I wanted, then I would almost be done. Now all I have to do is animate the length over time and that could be your path map animation. But I actually don't want just a regular line. I actually want a dotted or dash line. So in order to do a dotted or dash line, I'm gonna use my technique where I make a dash line using a paint note and then using the actual polygon line as a mask. And if you haven't already seen this video, I made another video where I show how to do this, but I also made a tool called the Dash Lines tool. It's a CB Dash Line tool. You can pick it up for free on my website if you're interested. So let me show you how to do this really quickly. I'm just gonna bring in a background node and I'm gonna take the alpha and I'm gonna drop it all the way down. This turns it into a completely transparent background. I'm also going to, with the background selected, I'm gonna bring in a paint node. In the paint node, I'm gonna come over to the polyline stroke, click on the polyline stroke. Now I'm gonna put down two points to make a line. Now it doesn't have to be a line and it doesn't really matter how long the line is because I'm gonna come into the stroke controls, come down to the very bottom where it says right click here for shape animation and I'm going to connect this to the polygon polyline. Now you notice that it snaps to that polygon one. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like by itself. You can see it's on a clear or transparent background and it has a soft line. I don't like the soft line, so I'm gonna come back into the brush controls. You could turn the softness all the way down, but I'm actually gonna change it to this circle brush shape and I'm also gonna turn the size down just a little bit. Now I'm gonna come all the way down to spacing and I'm gonna turn the spacing all the way up and now you can see we've made these dots, but that's actually not enough. So I'm gonna turn it up to 1.5 because I want it to be a little bit more spaced. And now when I come back over, you'll see that it is not combined. In order to combine it, I'm actually gonna take this polygon, I'm gonna move it over, I'm gonna delete this old background and I'm just gonna bring this in and I'm gonna replace this into that merge node. All right, so now we see we have our nice dashed lines, which is essentially what we want. I do want it to be colored, so let's go back to that red color that we originally planned. So I could leave it like this, but I'm actually gonna use this polygon now to mask the paint note. And now you'll see it turns into a nice dashed line. And if you wanna control the actual thickness, you can come into the polyline and you can control it with the border width. If I extend the border width all the way out, you'll see that it goes back to the dots. If I bring it back in, you'll see that it turns into a nice thin dash line. So I'm gonna leave it as a thin dash line. To animate it, back over into the paint node. I know I want this animation to finish at say frame 210. So I'm gonna come down to the stroke controls and we're gonna use this right on slider in order to animate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a keyframe and I'm gonna come back to frame 30 where I want it to begin and I'm gonna take the right on slider and move it all the way to the left. And you'll notice that it works just like the length slider in the actual polygon node. Right now, if I press play, you'll see that it'll start animating at frame 30 and it'll go all the way to Moab at frame 210. So at Moab, I actually want it to touch the dot of Moab at frame 210. So in order to do that, I gotta play with the spacing just a little bit in order to get it. So I'm gonna hold down command and control and I'm just gonna adjust the spacing until it's right at the point that I want it to be. So right there, that looks good. Okay, so now we have our line animation set up. The only thing left to do is actually to animate a camera. Now we could turn this into a 3D card and we could animate a camera around or we can just simply use a transform node. So I'm just gonna use the transform method now. After the merge node, I'm just gonna bring in another transform node. 
and we're going to use this transform node similar to a camera. Now there are issues with this. In fact, the main issue being if I get too close or if I size it up too large, we're going to notice that it's all going to start to distort. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your map size. Bigger is usually better. It'll make it a little bit easier to zoom in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and start it at frame 20. I'm just going to size this up just a bit and I'm going to bring this over to the Portland area. Now I'm just going to key the center, the size and the angle. I'm going to come all the way to frame 210 and I'm just going to move this Moab to the center here. And I'm just going to change the angle just a little bit. That way there's just enough angle to where it changes and it gives it a little bit of interest. So now if I come over here, you'll see that it starts to animate and you can see that there's just enough angle change where it looks a little interesting. So there's one more thing that I want to add and it's over here at frame 210. Once the line hits Moab, I want to have like a little ping. So we know that we just made it to Moab. Easiest way to do that is I'm just going to bring in a simple ellipse and a simple background. I'm just going to plug the ellipse into the background. We'll just color this red to keep with our red theme. I'm going to plug this in. We'll notice that it's way too big and that's okay. I actually want to take off the solid. I want to give it just a little bit of border width. That's probably a little too big. Let's go ahead and take these width and height and we'll go ahead and make them so that they're connected to each other. So in order to do that, I'm just going to double click in the height. Use the equal symbol to give me the pick whip, take the pick whip, drop it onto the width. Now, whenever I move the width, it will also move the height and that's fine. I just want to bring it into the center where the Moab is. I want to drop it all the way down. And I think I'm going to start this at like maybe a frame or two right as it hits. So right around 208 for me is where I'm going to start it. I'm going to go ahead and key the width. I'm going to go about 10 frames forward or so. And I'm just going to expand the width. Maybe about there. Let's just say this is as big as I want to get it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the level all the way off and I'm going to give it a keyframe. I'm going to come forward maybe five keyframes or so and I'm going to turn the level back on. What that's going to do is that's going to give it a nice ping look so it kind of fades out. So we have our ping, but let's say I want to double it up. The one ping just isn't enough. The easiest way to do that is to shift space to bring up the select tool and I'm just going to type in the word time. I'm going to use the time speed tool. I'm going to go ahead and hit add. Now I'm going to take after the background. I'm going to load it into the time speed. And in the time speed, I'm just going to give it maybe a four frame delay. I'm going to take the output. I'm going to merge it back onto the output of the background. And that is going to double it up. So now when we hit the space bar to play it, you'll see that it just gives it like a nice little ping. All right. And that's pretty much it. All we got to do is come over to the liver page, go ahead and render this out and we can stick it into our video. Now, of course, there's a bunch of different ways we could have done this. We could have used Google Earth Studio to make a 3D version of this. We could have put this on a card and we could add some sheer and some animation to the card. We could also animate the camera. We could bring in our own assets and we could have those assets follow along this motion path as if it was a car driving to Moab. And we could even use live footage above our car and we could start mixing and matching the two together. It's really all about how complicated do you want to get to tell a small part of your story. Just remember that the motivation for this specific scene is simply to show where you're going. I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.